Lab TV travels to the MIT Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington, Massachusetts to learn about tiny devices that have a huge impact on our lives, microelectronics. Microelectronics is the field that makes electrical circuits very, very small at the micron scale. The micron scale is on the order of, let's say, a thickness of a piece of paper or less than the thickness of a human hair. These small circuits run almost everything. They're the brains inside televisions, computers, cameras, and phones. Well, this is a standard wireless phone, and uh, inside there are a lot of microelectronic components. One example is this thin film display. The other examples are little microelectronic circuits, most of them made out of silicon, that do the radio frequency communication, as well as control the little keypad and numbers. To learn how microelectronics work, we need to start with the element silicon. Silicon is one of the fundamental elements. Um, it's a crystal, and this is its crystal structure. It's a very strong and rigid crystal. It's most commonly found in the form of sand. Silicon is the second most abundant element on Earth. In nature, it occurs as silicon dioxide. One interesting property of silicon is that it's a really good insulator, meaning it doesn't conduct electricity. If you put little impurities, meaning replacing one of these atoms with a different impurity, it will conduct a little bit of electricity. Adding those impurities turns silicon into a semiconducting material and gives it some important properties. That's right, if you apply an electric field across this, it will conduct or not conduct, very much like a switch. And switching on and off is the key to controlling the flow of electricity. One example that you might have is that you have a body of water and a gate that would stop the water from flowing. Lifting that gate up allows the water to flow from one side to the other. That's essentially what these transistors do with electrons. They allow electricity to flow, and they have a little gate material. That oxide forms that gate material that allows the switch to turn on and off. A thin wafer of semiconducting silicon is sandwiched between two conductive plates the emitter and the collector. Then it can act like a transistor and either amplify or switch electrons on and off. Engineers can cram thousands of transistors into one tiny chip and create an integrated circuit, also called a semiconductor. This is a boule of silicon, one single crystal of this silicon material made from extremely pure sand. Well, this is sliced up into these very thin wafers. And that's the starting material for us to make all of these advanced circuits. This is one piece of silicon in a wafer form. It's very strong and brittle. On this side, we've patterned a large number of very fine circuitry. The thinness allows us to pack a whole lot into very small items, and your cell phone is one example of that. Each wafer contains hundreds of quarter-inch semiconductor circuits, or chips and each one of those is wired to perform thousands of functions. It does seem impossible. You can't do it with tiny little tweezers. You have to take advantage of the technologies that we use in this state-of-the-art facility. The engineers at Lincoln Labs are creating ways to make different kinds of microelectronics and to make them even smaller and more powerful. Mostly we'd like to be faster, smaller, and potentially less expensive for people to use. We do a lot of new idea creation, brainstorming, and we talk a lot, even at lunch, about new ideas that might be really interesting and a big benefit. Check out labtvonline.org for part two of Wafer Power and see how Jeremy and his team make the tiny silicon chips that can power tomorrow's technology.